Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I'm going to try to do some uh, battery capacity testing. And uh, I have here the DL24. It's a very famous, uh, it's a little electronic load, I think 150, 180 watts. But it has a special, special program inside that can calculate the capacity of the battery. So my first thought was, how hard can it be? You just uh, discharge a battery. You see how long it takes, you calculate the capacity, that is how many milliamps uh, it is. And uh, then I started reading a little bit more and uh, it turned out it is not necessarily exact science. So I have here my DL24, it's the latest version. It should have the Bluetooth integrated in the main board. Here I have an adapter. It has the two discharge and the sense and I can do most of the cells. I have some cells here. And uh, let's have a look. That is pretty nicely shipped. It has an adapter, another adapter, and all kinds of USB. It goes in the same plug there. And here we have the electronic load itself. And well, I do have real electronic loads also, but I like that this one has software that uh, you can easily set up all these things without needing to activate all kinds of logging options in your professional uh, electronic load. So let's have a look at this. It's pretty cool. I think it has all kinds of LEDs, so it's very fancy Chinese. It, you need to power it yourself, so we're just gonna do that. I have here my 12 volt board power. Okay, there is a DC plug here, but that is not the one I need to use, so I'm not sure what that is. Maybe I can read that later. Oof, I see the soldering of the fit is not done that well that is a pity i do that first because i don't want to melt the stuff immediately also when you use the correct plug it boots quite fast and we can do uh, constant current constant voltage you can set a cutoff voltage and then you can just do the battery testing so we have the electronic load, then we need batteries. Well, I have presumably the worst batteries available. The Dolly Dada, I'm not sure you can even buy them still because that was a big uh, scam. But let's see if that is the case. And I have some proper ones that were sent to me by uh, X-Star or X-Star. And uh, these are uh, 3300 milliwatt hour instead of milliamp hour. So also we need to see why is that. So for the testing, I also have uh, lithium ions 3.7, 4200 milliamp hours. I have the uh, Dolly Doodly Dot batteries, uh, alkaline, and they say very brave that they have almost 10,000 milliamps hour. And then we have the X star with more realistic values, but they say here, 3300 milliwatt hours and I saw later on the website that it was 2200 milliamps an hour and uh, these uh, milliwatt uh, settings I never saw before usually it says amp hours but it does make a little bit sense and that is also when I find out more about reading about batteries because uh, the milliamp hour is only one value of course because it depends on the voltage of the battery and this one is 1.5 so if I divide this uh, at 3300 with the 1.5 and then there is something else with measuring batteries because when is a battery empty is it empty when it is zero volts or is it empty when it doesn't is very effective anymore like this one is 1.5 if I start measuring and I set my cutoff voltage to zero it will drain it completely 
is that a good test? Or do we say, no, I think one volt, 1.9 volt, then it's empty, because if I put the battery in my clock, for instance, and it is lower than, uh, than one volt, the clock pr probably doesn't work. So in that sense, the battery for me is empty. So, and then we come in a very gray area and that is not necessarily exact science. And that's why I think the milliwatt hours is a little bit more fair because at some point the, the voltage goes down and then for the milliamps an hour, it doesn't necessarily make sense. But if you have the milliwatts, that is actually the capacity. Um, yeah, the watts also goes down if the voltage goes down while with the milliamps, you kind of wanted to have that the same, but of course that doesn't happen. But then on the other end, if you think, okay, at some point the battery is going to be empty and then the voltage will drop down. If, if this is very steep, then it doesn't even matter too much if you drain it for 70% or all the way to zero. Well, we start of course with uh, charging the batteries uh, fully. Uh, I have here from XSTAR also a battery charger. It's the L8. It can charge eight batteries, lithium ion or a nickel metal hydrate. And for, I think for nickel metal hydride, it even has a zero delta voltage and minus delta voltage. The exact details, I don't know, but it has to do with regenerating all the batteries. Well, it has that ability. I also wanted to charge the big battery. So I also have a charger here from uh, Litokala. And uh, well, it can charge about anything I'm doing here, alkaline. It can do metals, it can do AAs, and of course the big ones here. And it uh, well, it just looks all pretty cool. Uh, I check again the values of this battery, and it is actually 2,000 milliamps an hour. But when I calculate, when I calculate this 3,300, or the other way around, 2,000 milliamps hour times 1.5, that is actually 3,000 and not 3,300. So probably we lose energy somewhere and the value here is from the internal battery because some batteries have actually other batteries inside and that sounds a bit silly but this one the 9 volt battery usually have six little triple a's inside and uh, well this one is lithium ion so internally and I checked that on their website. It is a 3.6 lithium ion for a 900 milliamp an hour. So they convert it down to 1.5. And actually 10% goes lost there. Well, 2000 milliamp an hour or 3300 milliwatts for a pen light is quite something. So let's see if it is possible. I have here some test reports of, uh, of uh, other people that try to test uh, batteries. And also the composition of the battery makes also a difference. Um, let's say I have these alkaline batteries. They are not made for high currents. So if you start discharging those alkaline batteries with high current, their capacity just drops enormous. And, and I have a test there of someone who did that. And they have here an alkaline battery from Energizer. It had on a load of 100 milliamp, it, and they just did it over a few hours. It had 2600 milliamp an hour. And then they did that on 20, uh, 250 milliamps, and then it already dropped to 21. But if you do it with half an amp of 500 milliamps, this 2600 dropped to below 1600. So it almost half its value. So some batteries are made for high current discharge, and some batteries are not. And that is a huge difference in your results. So if you are lazy, you don't want to wait five hours because what I've read, if you do your test, try to calculate that it will run about five hours. And then you have a nice discharge current. You don't overload the batteries and then you will have a proper test. Okay, so some rules of thumb that I found. And as I said before, it is not exact uh, science. Um, but if you do uh, AA batteries, 
they say, okay, do it with 250, triple A's with 100, and D cells 50, and 9 volts 50. Well, it has triple A's inside, but a lot smaller, so the current should also be smaller. And they are also not made for high currents. And when is a battery empty? Well, no one seems to agree on that, but uh, if you do a 1.5, people usually stop the test between 0.8 and 1 volt. For the 3.7 lithium ions, it is between 2.8 and 3, so here is more consensus. For 9 volts, some test at 7, and others stop the test at 4.5, so you will see a little different, but also does it matter, because if the curve is very steep, then the last bit will not be that much. But only if that curve is steep. 12 volt batteries, I'm not sure if it was lead acid or lithium ion, but they say it was between 9 and 10 volts. And here I have it on paper with the different batteries. The alkaline here you see it will drop a lot in capacity if you do more current than it is actually built for, while here the ultimate lithium you see it is not decreasing too much and uh, what is this nickel metal hydride also so this lithium ion and nickel metal are built for high currents but still you get better result with a lower current so that is the theory but it is good to know because if we now gonna play with uh, with the dp24 we know, okay, if we're going to test pen lights, it's maybe not a good idea to discharge them with uh, two amps and then hope that we get a good result. But of course, I want to try that if it does affect our measurement. So let's make some space. This I don't need the adapter. I'm not going to use this. I'm not using this. Looks all nice, but I will not be using. The manual is English and Chinese, but it is so small and all different fonts here at, at some point. These letters are big and here they run out of space and then they make it even smaller. So I think uh, they missed the course word 1.1, but uh, it's there. I will download it and can zoom in. Um, this we can connect with two sense wires and with two load wires. This is the adapter that comes standard with it. You can make your own plug with the DC plug and then convert it. Or you can just put the wires in the screw. Different kind of USB plugs uh, to see if you discharge a power bank. It's uh, good. But I bought this one as an extra because I like to put immediately the cells in. And I can put this one or this one, no problem. And this you just connect here. So I will do that. Unpleasant surprise. I told you I bought this uh, cheap and that they were presumed very bad. And well, I bought these six months ago. I charged them and put them away, but I already have four here that has been uh, leaking. And I'm lucky I put this in plastic. Because otherwise they all would have been. And here I can already see it started. So I'm putting my hopes on this uh, better quality X uh, stars. Let's start just with, uh, with a little test. This one is full. I get the green one. Well, uh, put it in here and we see indeed a voltage. Let me see if I can find what I need to push here and there. I think constant current is nice. We have here one volt. Uh, time to discharge is one hour. Yeah, I'm not so sure. I want maybe to do that differently. So, but where am I if I do setup? I don't really see what's happening. Do I need to push it long? Yeah, I need to push it long. Constant resistant mode, constant power, constant voltage. Let's keep it to constant. Then the discharge time. Well, that should be five hours. 
Is this minutes or hours? That's why the menu sometimes makes sense. Then we have the discharge. That is two faults. Is there a dot there? I think, okay, let me put that to uh, 0 0.8. A little bit more than half. Can we set also a current? Ah, uh, here is the. Ah, uh, not in setup mode is the amps. Okay. Well, I'm gonna do what I should not do, and that is use way too much current. Just as a test. So I put one amp. So this should be ready in two hours. And then we didn't do the 10 hour test. And I'm not reading anything, I'm just playing around. So. Let's see, one amp, go. The current is about one amp, we see, as we want it. Then we have the voltage that dropped a little bit, even though we have sense wires. But that is still good for a 1.5. It is measuring the resistance, and we have here the milliamp hours. And the power is here also, so we should see that uh, 3300 that we have here on top, that we should find here after the test is done. It indeed seems to be five hours. So if everything is all right, this should take two hours. Well, I said that the power here would also be the same as the but it is not. This is really the current power. This is actually just an electronic load. And they just have nice software that you can also do this capacity tester with the milliamp hours here. But for the rest, and that's why you don't need to put the setup button if you just want to set the current for constant current mode. Um, also, this I must notice it is super, super quiet. And of course, that makes sense because it can do to 150 or if you have the plus model or the uh, dash P model, you can do 180. This one can do 150. And we are here uh, 100 times below, so 1.5 watts. So it probably doesn't do anything. No, it doesn't even get slightly warm. It's just cold. The test will take a while, and it has Bluetooth. So let's see if we can install the Bluetooth app. Well, downloading and installing the app was really super easy. Only, yeah, I connected it, and then the voltage goes up to three or 600 volt, and I didn't find a way to, to zoom in on that, so we only see a few volts. And for the amps, the same, it goes up to, I don't know, 10, 20, 20 amps. And we are discharging here with, uh, with one amp, and the voltage is 1.5. So we saw in the bottom, I saw a little bit, I could change the time frame, but uh, I, I didn't see how to change the voltage. So for our test right now, the voltage is uh, useless. <laughs> the, the app is useless. Um, there also is a PC app, and I will hopefully can connect that also through the Bluetooth. And uh, let's see if that's more useful. Okay, I downloaded a lot of stuff. This one seems the 102. This is, I have it. 2.1 even. Okay, well, let's try to install that one. Is this PC software? Yes, it is. Uh, can we switch it to English somewhere? Yeah. How do we connect it? This is through serial, but can I do to Bluetooth? Let me see how that works. Of course, I don't read the manual. I can put, of course, the USB cable, but at Bluetooth device. Ah, there it is. That was fast. Look. Okay. And it made COM12. I have the serial port notifier, which is great. So it added port 12. That went very smooth. And 
now I start the software again and then I say here 12 and then I say English and then I say connect okay it's creating two com ports maybe one com port is for the updating the firmware and one is for connecting actually to the device because i got the serial port uh, 9 and 12 somehow and uh well but we have read out let's see if we can uh, yes here we can set the maximum oh maybe in the phone app then if you click i try to uh, zoom in the values but uh yeah, and now they forgot to translate this. Hopefully this is okay. Yeah, now we can see the value right here. That is perfect. So then I would set it to two volts. Then we can actually see the value better for the current. We will do the same. Let's put uh, 1.5 amps. Okay, then we can see this better and with the uh, watts now then we can maybe do two watts okay so there is no auto setup for this but cool can we see values here the time is the time of the up but not what is on my display because we are running already 27 minutes So it is possible to connect the PC over Bluetooth. Uh, well, then I'm convinced that it will work also with the USB cable. Probably when you do a firmware update, it's probably recommended to do that by the USB cable and not with the Bluetooth. But um, yeah, it was able to see what was going on, but you don't see the exact values from the display because I was already running my test for half an hour and those values I did not see on the screen. So when you st start the test and you want to follow it on the PC, you need to start it probably on the PC. Um, I did found that the values of the scale you could adjust on the PC software. I tried the same trick again on the phone, but it didn't work. So on the phone, it's just always this 300 volts while discharging a battery that is completely useless. By the way, if you switch from Bluetooth from the PC to your mobile app and the other way around, uh, on the PC, I really needed to disconnect it first uh, Bluetooth device in my device in my Bluetooth device list before I could reconnect it again with my phone. In the phone, if you switch it off, it probably drops the connection. So then it's no problem connected with the PC. But once the PC is connected, if it is in your Bluetooth device list, it uh, will not allow the phone uh, to connect. 40 minutes in the test, it's still going strong. We are almost at. Uh, almost at uh, 700 milliamps an hour we should be of course in an hour we should be on a thousand it doesn't necessarily feel that we are pulling one amp from this little battery almost 30. the electronics of the battery is probably in the top because here it is like 25 and if we go up we see the temperature go up So these tests will take a few hours and uh, I will take uh, different batteries to try the capacity and if it meets the capacity and I expect for the X star batteries that they uh, will probably do that on one amp and then I want to see what will it do on two amps and will it actually increase more if we only do it on 500 millis but that will uh, of course then take uh, four or five hours so I will not time lapse that. I will just make uh, pictures of the screen of the end result. And then later we can play a little bit more because it is also an electronic load. And uh, let's see if we can get uh, 150 watts out of it. X star batteries are actually doing what they promised. We are still above one volt. We have passed the two hours. We have passed the 2000 milliamps and it's still going. And the test is completed. A look at this. 
the cutoff, so we went into the cutoff, so in this four minutes, it went from one volt to 0.8 volt, so that means that that last bit is very steep. Uh, I need to watch back the time lapse myself because I was not paying attention. Uh, but we see here the capacity is above the 2000 as it should be. Only I see in the energy because it says on the battery uh, 3300 milliwatt hour. So that means 3.3 uh, watt hour. And it measured here 2.8. So it did get the capacity, but it didn't, didn't necessarily put uh, watt hours. But that could also be because we put the cutoff to. 0.8 volt, and if we put the cutoff to zero, then we probably will get this uh, 3300. So the, the battery delivered what it should do. It's they say it's a 200 milliamp hour. It did that, and then on the energy level, it says 2.8. Well, it should do 3.3, but we didn't charge it fully to 0 0.8. So the battery still has that energy left. So that could be that it. Uh, that 0.5 difference is still in that battery. So I will do another test for that, trying to set the cutoff a, a lot lower. Also, it's interesting, will it do the same on 2 amps, on 3 amps, on 4 amps? So that actually worked pretty well. So the X stars were great on one amp. On two amp, you saw really that the capacity was going down. But on a half, between one and a half, there was slight, slight difference. And going to even a, a quarter of an amp, 250 milli. It just did what I promised. I tried doing some tests on this uh, Dolly Dadas, or I have here something else, Ultra Fire. Well, it does exactly, it burns your money, it is uh, crap. But the X-Stars did very well. Uh, let's try the, the normal electronic load functions. What I did, I have my power supply here. I just have the device as I added, and uh, I just added these two clips here. We can see the voltage is connected. Let's... Um, let's put one amp. It is constant current. Let's switch it on. We see now the ventilator is uh, blowing. I don't see fancy LEDs, so that is probably only in the in the big model. But it is dissipating now uh, 13 watts. And uh, yeah, we can do more. Can we do this while it's running? Yeah. Go to 30 watts almost. How many amps we can do? I think I can change the digits here. Three and a half. Four amps dissipating now. 50 watts. No problem. Just like a normal electronic load. Five, six, seven, eight, ten amps. Yeah. 10 amps, no problem, it should go to 150, 140 watts, 150 watts, it is doing that, it is about this maximum, and I think it has to do with the cooling, it doesn't get that hot to be honest, yeah, now it starts to get hot. As an electronic load, it also works pretty straightforward. Uh, you connect it to the PC, you can do the same controls, you can even export to CSV if you want. Uh, I removed the load and it was just cooling uh, still for 10 seconds and then it just switches off. It's, it's very silent, even when the ventilator runs, it is not that uh, noisy. My power supply makes, makes more, more noise. So uh, that's it. 
thank you XTAR for delivering the batteries so we could do a proper test because all my other batteries were uh, crap to be honest and uh, yeah we were able to do some good tests thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you next time